All right, we're going to look at question number six from the 2014 exam here. And this question threw some people because, oh my gosh, it talked about polymers and it talked about, you know, use some organic chemistry molecules. But, you know, all they were really testing is the stuff that we've looked at in class. So they just used organic molecules and used polymers. But if you just actually read the question and focus on the questions, it was nothing that overly crazy. So let's take a look at this. It says, student places a mixture of plastic beads containing polypropylene, symbolized PP, sorry, and polyvinyl chloride, symbolized PVC. So these plastic beads are in a one liter beaker containing distilled water. They're stirred vigorously, and the student observes beads of one type sink, beads of another type float. And here we see the structures of polypropylene and PVC shown in the diagram. So question A says, given that the spacing between polymer chains, again, polymers are long chained molecules that have a bunch of monomers, the things in parentheses there, linked over and over again. And so it just says the spacing between them is similar instead of, that means like not, one of them isn't smushed and way more dense than the other. So which ones are the beads that sink? Okay, and I kind of just mentioned the word that we should think about. When you're talking about will something sink or float in water, you should be thinking density. When something is less dense, it will float, more dense sink. And so you see these structures, and the thing that should pop out to you is that for the polypropylene, we have all these CH3s, whereas for the PVC, we have chlorines in the same place. And if you look at the mass, the molar mass, okay, CH3, 12 plus 3, that's 15, and chlorine is 35.5. So when you would add up all of the different masses for long stretches on this molecule, it would be pretty significant. And so all you had to recognize was, you know, CH3 weighs less, has less mass than the chlorines. So all in all, we would expect that the PVC its mass or density would be greater so it should be the one that is sinking so a simple concept of sink float tried to throw you off with these crazy polymer looking things but it all comes down to mass the heavier molecule is more likely to sink in water then it said that the polypropylene pp is synthesized from propene and you see that here and that the PVC is synthesized from vinyl chloride. All right, and so we see that here. Again, our similar looking structures. The difference is the fact that we have CH3 here and chlorine here. Now, the boiling point of propene is lower than the boiling point of liquid vinyl chloride. Account for this difference in terms of the types and strengths of IMF's intermolecular forces present in each liquid. So we got to mention both. So our propene you see is only carbons and hydrogens. So that is signifying a nonpolar molecule. So the only thing that we're going to find here is London dispersion forces. Vinyl chloride will also have those and they'll actually be a little stronger because again, drop my pen, chloride is more massive than the CH3, so that part of the molecule is more polarizable. You don't really have to focus on that as long as you could recognize that, hey, this is a polar bond. This molecule is going to have dipole-dipole interactions. Okay, so propene nonpolar will only have weak London dispersion forces. Again, I had to mention the type and strength of the IMF present in each liquid. Vinyl chloride has a dipole moment. It will experience stronger dipole-dipole forces, causing more energy to be needed to break them in order for boiling to happen. Again, you could have went down the, if you just mentioned the LDFs and, and talked about how the propenes is weaker than the vinyl chloride, it still should get you a point. But, uh, and if you mentioned it in addition to, that's fine, but you didn't have to. Now our last part, again, a nice little gimme here, I hope. A separate experiment 
student measures the enthalpies of combustion of both of the compounds. And we see that the combustion of two moles of vinyl chloride releases 2300 kilojoules per mole. So its delta H is negative 2300 kilojoules per mole. They gave us the delta H, the standard enthalpies of formation below. So now they want us to figure out the delta H for the combustion of two moles of propene. And then you also want to compare it because it says determine whether the combustion is going to be more, less, or the same amount. So when we have our delta H's, it's just products minus reactants. So I've got six carbon dioxides, six waters in my products. My reactants, I've got two of the C3H6's and nine oxygens, but oxygens are zero. And so when you play plug and chug, you find that this delta H is negative 3,858 kilojoules per mole. And since it wanted you to compare them, please make sure you answer all parts of the question. This combustion releases more energy than the vinyl chloride one. All right, again, it threw some kids off because of using organic words and molecules and stuff, but it was just density, sink or float, IMFs, and delta H calculation. All right, hope this helps. See you soon.